I'm really looking forward to tonight's discussion. We've got a lot of, I think, really exciting news to share with everybody off the back of the announcement that we made um, yesterday. Um, and also after uh, a very successful um, seven, eight days in the US that I had uh, with critical meetings with uh, partners and a lot of uh, product development work that we were able to complete very successfully. Tonight's uh, tonight's uh, presentation, we're gonna, you know, as always, just need you to look at the forward-looking statements and just have a quick read through that, please. You all can read much faster than I can talk. And uh, with that, we'll commence. So basically, we're going to just very quickly just ground everybody, recap on our strategy. Um, I'll then spend a little bit of time on the Q1 performance update. And then I'm going to spend um, most of the discussion on the a number of the major actions that we are taking to move the company to scale and ultimately profitability, which is our, our major focus. And then we'll have some time for uh, Q&A. Okay, so let's first start with the recap on strategy. Look, what's really exciting, and, and, I, and I, I see this more and more as I'm engaging with the outside world, with investors, uh, with uh, a number of ba bankers as well, investment bankers. We as a company and what we are doing, all of us together with our shareholder partners, we're really at the cutting edge intersection of three of the largest trends that are taking the world by storm. Clearly health and wellness, specifically following uh, post-COVID, uh, the power of biotechnology, and then obviously the importance of sustainability. And we're really at the heart of this, which is super exciting because we're demonstrating you know, significant thought leadership in this area. Um, as we really lead lead the whole area of of um, of plant based um, leveraging the power of the plant and bringing the power of the plant to to people as part of uh, our leadership of botanical synthesis and more to come in this area. When we look at our key strategic pillars, as we've discussed before, we have the nutraceutical pillar and we have our pharmaceutical pillar. Tonight's discussion, we're going to focus on our nutraceutical pillar, and I'm going to spend some time taking you through how we are mining the gold in our technology. I always said when I came to this company uh, three years ago, I actually celebrated my three-year anniversary um, about two weeks ago, and wow, it's gone so quickly. Uh, it's been an amazing journey, but I always said that you know, Bioharvest really was like, it was like an R&D gold mine. And this gold mine just had this most amazing R&D, and it was all about bringing this R&D to the market. We've done it with Vinia, um, and we're busy scaling that as our core product. And tonight, we're going to talk about how we really take that to the next level as we look at disrupting a number of billion-dollar categories with the power of our superior science, superior taste, and ultimately superior efficacy. And that's all anchored in our technology. So it's gonna be a fun ride. And I think you'll be um, really excited with the work that we're doing and what we're gonna be bringing to market in the next 12 months. So let's first touch on Q1 performance. Um, overall revenue for Q1, you know, as we start to scale the business, we saw a, a threefold increase in overall revenues. Uh, you'll see we're now reporting revenues uh, as opposed to sales orders, <clears throat> given the, the, the unique mix that we have and, and uh, the, the, the size and sheer magnitude of the business and the importance of subscriptions. So we see now basically um, Q1, uh, Q1 having a, a three times increase um, overall. When we look at the U.S., it was a fantastic quarter for the U.S., uh, nearly a five times growth. Um, hitting that just under $1.7 million in, in revenue. So really, there's a lot of momentum in the business. And we see that also in Little Israel, which is an important barometer for our business. You know, Israel is now three years, pretty much three years old. It's a more mature business. We grew the business, in fact, 38% when you look at um, shekel to shekels. It's 23% when we reported in US dollars because there was 
a, um, a quite significant devaluation of the Israeli shekel to the dollar. But when we look at shekel to shekel, we saw a 38% increase in first quarter 23 versus fourth quarter of 22. Importantly, as we are so focused on driving the business to profitability by the end of the year on a cash operating level, is to start to see a significant improvement in our gross profit margins. And we start to, started to see this with increased manufacturing scale. And this, obviously, for myself and Ilana, our new COO in the business, and in fact, all of the leadership team, is a major, major focus for us to drive the gross profit margins. And obviously, you know, we have an aggressive revenue target of guidance that we've given of 17 plus million. This is still achievable. But obviously, as you can see, it requires continued momentum build and a step up in the second half of the year as we start to increase our marketing activities. And uh, I'm really looking forward to closing the second quarter in a few days' time after you know overall solid performance, continued momentum, and then continuing that momentum into the third and fourth quarter by taking it up a significant notch as we start to look really at driving very, very hard at that very aggressive target of 17 million. But we, you know, we don't set easy targets. We should be setting very challenging targets and we're gonna do what it takes to, to get there. I'm gonna now spend some time on the major actions that we are taking to move the business to scale and profitability. So you've probably seen this model before. I introduced you to it um, last, uh, at last meeting. And the model is a, a model which really helps us understand where we need to be focusing as a, as a management team, and as a leadership team. And in the transparency that we always have with our shareholder partners, I always like to take you through really what I'm taking my leadership team or what we're working through on a week to week basis. So the model is obviously it's all about for us, we've got to optimize revenue management and then there's just ruthless, relentless cost management in the business. And by optimizing revenue management with a maniacal focus on cost management, we will get to that break-even point and then obviously start to really generate the significant profits that we believe that our technology and that we as a biotech company can deliver in the future based on the power of the technology that we have and our ability to operationalize that technology. So let's first talk about on the start on the revenue management side where I'm going to be spending most of my time tonight talking about the importance of channel scaling and product scaling. All right. So channel scaling, we've talked about the importance of not just relying on vineyard.com as our website. As you know, we're advertising on TV. So we fill the top of the funnel and we've got to make sure that we we are present where people like to go and shop, the different channels that they like to shop. So obviously Amazon for us is king. Uh, we've started now in the last uh, literally four weeks in walmart.com as well as pushed into eBay as well uh, through, a, uh, through a partner. I'm going to spend tonight talking a little bit about the Amazon success that we're having because obviously Amazon is such an important powerhouse in the US as people start to understand uh, a unique product proposition. They then start to look for it either by going first to Google and then directly to the website or directly to the website. Or if they're Amazon shoppers, they go just directly to Amazon to, to go in there and to learn more about the product. So on the Amazon side, we added subscribe and save in early May. Now, I think it's important for everybody to understand that in um, we we were out of stock in Amazon up until the literally the third week in March. So actually, it was like record time that Amazon gave us the permission because they could see significant velocity that they gave us permission to move to subscribe and save, and we have the ability now to and we're driving a ten percent saving for people to go onto a subscription program. So that's helped us significantly grow our Amazon business. And then in addition, what we've done to increase the number of SKUs that we're bringing and the choices to consumer and to provide them better value, we've added our 60 SKU um, 
our two month SKU at 8895 into the overall mix. So as you can see here, the consumer has a choice of a one month 30 count of $49.95, $1.67 per capsule, or they can go to the 60 count at $88.95, but roughly $1.50 per capsule. Um, wow, we've had amazing results on Amazon and, and, and I really wanna thank my Amazon team that are really very, very focused on driving Amazon to be a critical channel for us. Since we came back into stock in 2023, which was that, at that middle of March, we have sold more than 4,000 orders, 4,337 orders, and that equates to roughly $220,000 in revenue. Our average units per order is 1.2, so we're seeing many people buying multiples. What's important to understand is that we've only spent roughly $7,000 in marketing on Amazon so far. So what you, you see happening here is that a lot of the Amazon business is coming from the TV spending that we have across the broader TV networks with people then moving into Amazon. When people are in Amazon, we have spent that $7,000 to make sure that we're bringing them to our products. And what we're seeing is a ROAS, which is a return on advertising spend, of roughly 9.65. And what that means is for every dollar we spend, we're getting back in revenue $10, which is amazing. Um, we, we're working methodically to scale the business in a way that at, at, at best, we're doing what it takes to maintain that kind of ROAS. As you scale the business, your ROAS traditionally does come down. But at that kind of level, if we come down to six or seven, it's still you know, a fantastic result from a return on investment perspective. We also see a number of repeat buyers coming back with a very short period of time, 25% of our repeat buy of our buyers are repeats, and that's without subscription. So that's a very strong uh, metric. And Q3, we're now getting prepared to really start to scale Amazon and increase our spend as we go after specific keywords, as well as um, specific uh, other players in the category that we've seen an ability to take a significant amount of business from. So overall, you know, we're priming ourselves as we scale into the second half of this year to continue aggressively with what, what we're doing that's working. Top of the funnel TV, moving into Facebook and Google to drive greater conversion. And we're seeing, continue to see fantastic conversion rates from the work that we're doing. And then making sure we have a really, really strong Amazon there to catch people who are those hardcore Amazon users and then branching out into your walmart.coms, Ebays, et cetera. Great. I'm now gonna talk about product scaling where we've seen a lot of excitement. I've had a lot of um, um, connection points with investor partners in the last uh, 24 hours since the announcement and all very um, encouraging and very, very exciting. Um, and I'm gonna spend some time now dimensionalizing and breaking down a little bit of the detail that we went through in the press release yesterday. So first of all, before I go into the detail, we celebrated last month, two years in the business in the US. Now, granted, the first 15 months, we're very much stick putting out, just dipping our toes in the water because we couldn't scale the business yet because we didn't have our manufacturing facility up and running. As you know, in September, we, we hit the accelerator button and we started to push the marketing and that's when we started to see the significant growth. But we have, at the end of the day, really hit some major milestones and achievements. We have more than 2,435 real verified reviews with a rating of 4.7. Uh, these include our Amazon reviews as well, um, which are continuing to build. And that's really an amazing result, um, given the activity that we've had. When you look at it over the last 24 months, we've sold $8.26 million of Vinia, Vinia revenue. That equates to roughly 170,000 bottles of Vinia and 7.25 million capsules consumed. And as I said to somebody um, in the last, uh, in the last uh, day or so, that that's 7.25 million bottles 
of red wine, equivalent of based on the Pisces resveratrol. And you can imagine we've done that utilizing our 1,000 square meter facility. And you would think if that was coming from real vineyards, you can just imagine how much land that would be required for that. So just kind of a, a plug for the, the, this, the quantumness of the sustainability advantage that we bring. So with these achievements, we, we understand our customers or consumers really well. And I wanna spend some time just articulating the four core consumers that we are every single day connecting with in order to purchase our Vinia brand. Okay, great. I hope we're doing well. I don't have any emoticons, so I don't know how you guys are feeling, but I hope you're feeling as good as I do right now. Okay, so the first consumer I want to talk about, which today is a big part of our business, we call problem solvers. These are people normally 50 plus. Their motivation is they have today pre-existing blood flow related challenges, and they are looking for solutions now to improve their overall quality of life as it relates to challenges that are derived from having blood flow challenges um, across their overall bodies. They're very, very problem solution oriented. And these we call problem solvers. The next consumer that we're um, continuously focused on is what we call proactive, preventative people. These are people I still fit in this group, just, that are 35 to 50. They realize that you know, life is not eternal. They're focused on doing what it takes to maximize their longevity. They want to live to 100. They want to enjoy life to the max. They do understand and they're well educated and they understand that blood flow is king for an overall functioning of the healthy body. They also understand on the importance need as you get older to do what it takes to reduce any type of damage to your overall cells. And they're looking for science. They're very discerning. They're looking for science. They're looking for clinical results. They can smell BS when they see it. And they're all focused really on optimizing their individual longevity. These are our proactive, preventative consumers. The third group is more of a collective group of what I call, we call our professional integrative medicine specialists. These are medical doctors, chiropractors, natu naturopathic, um, osteopaths, homeopaths, nutritionists, 35 plus, highly qualified. Um, their motivation at the end of the day, they're looking at the best conventional and complementary um, me uh, med medicinal solutions that are evidence-based that can solve the core issues of their patients. Um, they always look first to natural supplements which have e efficacy and clinical support to give their patients before going to other routes. They appreciate clean label. They don't want any fillers and no solvents, right? And that's why Vinia has really resonated so strongly with this audience, given the science, given the cleanliness of our product, and obviously the superior efficacy that we have grounded in clinical trials. And then the last target that we've seen really good traction on in the last eight months, and I really kudos to, to AJ and Jared that have led this effort with um, elite athletes. Um, and this group, we were kind of calling out athletes, pro athletes, but also those wannabe athletes and weekend sports warriors that have big dreams. These are normally people 16 to 35. Their motivation is we want to be the best at what we do. We're looking for that extra edge, that extra one to two percent can make a huge difference in their performance when you're at this level. They today and it's amazing because they all work with nutritionists they're so educated specifically as it relates to their physical and mental performance they understand that increased blood flow and better oxygen and nutrient delivery can really deliver this edge and it's a critical part of the functioning and that, and that blood flow is a real anchor in their performance they only want the best they trust what their coaches and what their nutritionists recommend and this is an area that we've got heavily involved in by connecting with the coaches and the nutritionists and then driving it to the athletes. So 
These are the four consumers, consumer groups that you know we believe have the greatest opportunity for us as we start to look at growing our business. We are making great inroads with these consumers with our superior science and our superior efficacy. The opportunity to optimize and go big here is significant. And this is what we've seen because really up until now, we've just been like tippy toes as, as it relates to the marketing spend and the marketing dollars and our, and, and, and our ability to, to have the channels to reach these consumers. Well, it's now time to change as we really start to scale the business. And what the this means is that in the next 12 months, you know, we've built a $8 million plus business from pretty much one SKU. And we're going to go from one SKU to 10 SKUs. And we're going to be doing this, leveraging the power of Vinya as the base to develop unique formulations and delivery systems to deliver best on the needs and the lifestyle of these specific focus consumer groups. And we're gonna be doing this with superior science, with superior taste, and ultimately with superior efficacy. And in doing this, we're gonna go from one category that we operate in to five categories that we operate in and are gonna be disrupting with our unique superior science with superior taste because taste is king as well as superior efficacy. So now let me break this down and help you understand what this means for us in the next 12 months. The first category we're going to disrupt and leverage the power of Vinya with is the coffee category linked to really what is a cultural delivery system for Americans which is basically the single drip coffee, which ultimately today is led by Keurig. And we're gonna be targeting our proactive consumers as well as our problem solvers because they are heavy coffee consumers in this space. Just to give you some perspective, 38 million coffee Keurig, I should say, Keurig machines in the US in 2022. 41% of US homes have a single serve brewer. It's a remarkable figure when you think about it. 28% of USA workplaces have a single serve brewer. And when you look at the size of the prize here, just to dimensionalize it, if I look at the US market, or I should say the North American market and the European market, it's 62 billion pods. Yes, 62 billion pods of coffee. That's a 27, literally uh, north of uh, $27 billion, significant, significant opportunity and growing. Obviously, we're not targeting all of that. We're being very focused on two key areas, functional coffee and also decaf coffee in pods. When we look at functional coffee, we see that functional coffee roughly represents about 500 million pods across US and Europe, of which probably you know, 40 to 50%, let's say 250 million pods is in North America. When we look at decaf, and decaf's kind of like you know, the, 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 the small little giant that's waiting out there to be given a little bit of attention, 10% of Americans drink decaf exclusively, and there's another 10% of Americans that drink both decaf and regular. So if you look at the size of the prize of decaf, it's probably a 6 billion pot opportunity across US and Europe. Again, let's say 40 to 50%. So let's you know, basically say it's like a you know, two and a half billion opportunity in the US of A. So this demonstrates the significant opportunity that we have to go in and disrupt each of these coffee market segments. Let's talk about how we're going to do that. So while we've been working very closely and we've found an amazing partner out of Seattle, the home of coffee called Joe's Garage. Joe's Garage are probably one of the top three co-manufacturers of specialty coffee in the USA. 
And we've had a fantastic experience working with uh, Chris McKinsey and the team there in developing on our critical formula, which is all around superior science, superior taste, and superior efficacy in order to disrupt the market. Um, I spent some time in Seattle. This is um, you know, on the right-hand side, you see some of their raw specialty co coffee, and here it's going through the, the, roasting, uh, the roasting process. It's amazing to see beautiful, beautiful factory. We spent a lot of time on the sensory side, making sure that we have the best tasting formula versus our core competitor, which is VitaCup here. And as you can see, we, we had a significant taste testing session uh, while I was there. And on the left-hand side, you see the raw coffee beans that we're using, this very 100% Arabica specialty coffee grade, together with the vineyard in the middle, you see how it's all blended together. And here we see dear Justin, even though we can't see him on the TV screen, we see him here in the picture, uh, actually helping me with some of the sensory work and overall taste evaluation with uh, Dave, who is a member of our, uh, um, our board as well. We've really worked hard to come up with a superior taste, leveraging our superior science and superior efficacy. Um, and these, what you see here is our work in progress packaging. It's for illustration purposes only. There's a lot of marketing work we're doing to really make sure that we, we nail it because this is so critical part, but starting to get there. But we are going to deliver a superior taste proposition. We have a product that has 100% Arabica specialty grade. It's a custom blend. It's low acid, which is very important. It's small batch artisan roasted in Seattle, in the home of coffee, handcrafted from high altitude, importantly, responsibly sourced and keto friendly. The competition, in order to provide the energy, are utilizing MCT oil, turmeric, D3 and B vitamins. And as a result, they've laced their product with cinnamon. You can see they write here, full body flavor with cinnamon. The cinnamon is there is really to mask a lot of the challenges you have in the flavor profile from the MCT oil, the turmeric, and the D3 and B vitamins. In our case, we're driving that energy from blood flow. There's no need for maskers. Um, and we really believe we have a superior taste and we're going down the path, obviously, to quantify this with quantitative blind taste test to make sure that what we launch is superior because we want to go out and launch on a superior taste platform as well as superior efficacy. Talking about superior efficacy, our efficacy is clinically grounded. It's backed by human clinical trials. We're going to be driving that energy that decaf consumers, they need but are so fearful for that energy coming from caffeine because they are so concerned about the caffeine-driven crash or kick, or kick or crash, I should say. And we're delivering through blood flow that 12-hour sustained release inside their pod. Um, and we're obviously going to be focusing on key claims um, anchored in our heart health claims, also talking about the ability to explain how we drive the increased blood flow through increased dilation of arteries, and the fact that this drives significant improved physical energy and mental alertness um, as a result of more oxygen and nutrients going to the overall, you know, the brain, the body, the body tissues um, and cells. So this is how we're going after the decaf space. Super exciting. It's a sleeping giant. You know, in, in, you know they often say, the opportunity of being, you know, a, a big fish in a small pond. In a way, in the scale of things, decaf is, you know, 10% of the coffee market, but that 10% is huge. And if we hit a home run in the decaf market by giving that decaf consumer that from a lifestyle perspective needs the physical energy and mental alertness, but they can't get it from coffee because of the caffeine. And now we're able to deliver it through the coffee mechanism, mechan uh, delivery mechanism. This can be a game changer. And that's what we're trying to do here to really build leadership in the decaf market 
from an overall pod perspective. In addition, we're going after regular coffee drinkers. This, as you can see, is a more of a blood flow driven super energy coffee. We're still working on the final branding here. What's unique about this is you're getting all the benefits of caffeine, plus you get that extra energy, which is derived from blood flow. You're getting that extra physical energy and alertness. And again, that energy is not an energy kick or an energy crash. It's that 12 hour sustained release energy that you get on top of that kick you'll get from your caffeine uh, that you're um, consuming inside this product. So again, it's a very interesting model that we're gonna provide consumers around how we're giving them that long-term energy. You get the kick from caffeine, and then Vinya basically maintains that energy through the day. Um, and that's obviously anchored in all of our research of taking one capsule of Vinya every single day for 90 days in our clinical trials. We're able to get that significant increase in dilation of arteries, which drives the increased blood flow and energy. So hopefully with that, you're... You have the same sense of optimism and excitement around how we're using superior science, superior taste, and ultimately superior efficacy to deliver significant value to the consumer and to disrupt what are today massive categories because they're so ingrained in the overall consumer lifestyle of Americans. Okay, great. I'm going to move on now to talk about the other major focus of us, of ours, I should say, which is going after those athletes and weekend warriors and those wannabe athletes, as well as providing more choices for our integrative medicine specialists to be able to provide their patients based on the different needs. And this, in this case, we've looked at our branding strategy and felt that we needed to have a, a brand that was anchored in our Vinia Essential Equity, but really spoke to what the athlete is looking for. And that's why we're going to be launching the Vinia Pro lineup. This really is, is, is born deep in what we've seen with key grassroots activity. And as you know, the work that we did with Yo Murphy, with all the NFL combine athletes, and seeing the impact that you know, Vinia was having on their overall performance and how the nutritionists really started to understand that this is a critical part of their overall eating and supplement regime that they need to have to really be competitive and to raise their overall performance. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're in a very unique situation where we have as a result of word of mouth and the results that people, these athletes are getting on Vinia, every day we're being approached by different athletes, coaches, coaches, as well as sports nutritionists to partner with different institutions, different teams, different individuals um, on actually providing them with, with Vinia and being part of their overall um, training and, and, and regime in order to improve their performance. You know, as you know, we we sponsored a number of players in the NFL draft that all got drafted um, and I think are going to have great careers um, over the next few years. We have um, two rising NCAA stars that are looking for a breakout year this year. Um, and you see Dallas Grant at the top and Matt Bedford below. Um, we also have, um, you know, major coaches here, Robert Steeples from LSU, um, actively working together with us. Um, and, you know, frankly, we're working with the major sports agencies like Wasserman, ISC, Exos, and Three Strand. And this is how we have right now 200 plus NFL athletes who are utilizing Vinia during the training camps that they're on right now. In addition to this, you know, we've got rising stars like Baron Davis from the Denver Broncos, a linebacker that is set to have a, an amazing uh, um, season this season coming up. And then an Olympic athlete, an Olympic swimmer, Michael Andrew, who is looking to um, really set a record as far as the 50 meter freestyle is concerned. And in addition to these, you know, hardcore professional sports athletes, we also have people that we're working and partnering with, 
like Gary Breaker, who's a very famous biohacker, a well-respected longevity expert that are really now starting to understand the power of Vinia as, as it relates to the different treatment regimes that they have. So it's super, super exciting. Um, and, you know, we're starting to get that street credo. And with that street credo, it allows us to really be bold, to punch hard. And I'm really proud to introduce to you today what is our Vinia Pro liner. We have the Vinia Pro Blood Flow Athletic Formula. We have the Vinia Pro Blood Flow and Plant Based Protein Formula. And then the Vinia Pro Blood Flow and Energy Hydration System. And I'm going to spend a little bit of time on each of these respective unique propositions that we're looking to bring to the market in Q1. With coffee coming into the market, as I've said previously, we want to sell our first pods in the market before Christmas of this year. So I think it's important first before I go into, and I don't mean to tease you, before I go into each of the products to kind of just share a little bit about, you know, the mechanism of action here or why we believe we have that superior science, superior taste, and specifically the superior efficacy. And what we've learned is that performance is all anchored in blood flow. You've heard me say this a few times already tonight. Blood flow is that crucial edge that separates athletes from their competition. And Vinia serves as the critical component in their routine. Why? Because it plays a pivotal role in increasing their blood flow. And with that increase in blood flow, you have more circulation of vital nutrients and oxygen to their cells, their tissues, and their muscles. Whilst at the same time, that blood flow is eliminating waste for the expedited active recovery. So this holistic approach that Vinia delivers for the athletes can drive a significant improvement in their overall performance, giving them the extra advantage that they need to excel. And it becomes an indispensable addition to their training regime. So with understanding that and how all the pieces come together, we are also making sure that we have all the right quality-based credentials in being NSF certified sport. This is critical because even today, there are many teams that want to use Alvinia but are unable to because we need to have this NSF certified sport verification, which is a critical part of the assessment to ensure that there's no violation of any anti-doping laws. So basically we're, we're starting the process right now with the, the organization, the NSF organization. And this is critical because it's accepted and mandated by Major League Baseball, National Hockey League, Canadian Football League, also NFL, NBA, PGA, and on and on and on. It's a critical marker for us to have wherever possible on our products. Um, and that's something we're very, very focused on getting before we launch in the first quarter across as many of our product line as possible. Obviously, we're working with co-packers. In some cases, it might be a little bit um, diff challenging, but we believe that um, across these three lines, at least two of them, we, we maybe three, but at least two will be NSF certified sport. Hey, Elon. Yeah. I just, we just had a question about uh, certification. I, our, our products are, are produced in a in obviously a very novel and unique way um does organic would that ever come into play with with vinia when you're talking about so certified the whole, organic the, the whole the whole notion of organic it's interesting and it's a, it's a much bigger discussion the whole mm -hmm. notion of organic is 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 a little bit challenging because like organic when you think about organic organizations they always think about the ground <laughs> and we don't mm -hmm. grow in the ground we grow in bioreactors so there's a bit of education that we have to do with the third party certified organic organizations. It's something we will get to. We just haven't seen it as a priority, but we have to educate them because they like, they have an agricultural model, right? That's that's the way they think. So this is work that we need to do. You know, I would say, Justin, we get maybe, you know, one question on organic that comes up every three months. It's it's not a it's not a major driver for us. Um, but you know, again, it, that's why it's lower in the priorities. But this NSF certified sport is obviously very important for us um, to be validated 
um, and get into the critical teams that we want to be obviously partnering with. Perfect. Thank you. No problems. Okay. So now I want to talk about our core product, obviously, which is the blood flow athlete formula. So what we found is that the current dosage that we're using for top athletes has been roughly, it's about two capsules per athlete. You have some athletes that um, may take more, but it's mostly two capsules per athlete, um, which contains 12 milligrams of pie seed resveratrol. So the, we've kind of settled on the pro dosage. We're going to be able to settle on 50 milligrams of pie seed resveratrol. And this is something that we can produce with our new drying system. We're able to get much higher levels of pie seed, and we can do this with two capsules. The claims will be focused on giving you that extra performance edge, and then two critical claims, which are around improving physical energy performance and mental alertness because of the increased blood flow, delivery of oxygen, and removal of toxins. And importantly, as we started to see as a result of what happened in the NFL season last year, the importance of heart health. It's on the mind of every single coach. Supporting heart health by improving blood flow and delivery of oxygen is so important. So this is where the, the key focus will be for us as we look at launching this product. It's the athletic formula. It's two and a half times stronger than the existing call of baseline formula. Again, coming back to my superior science, superior taste and superior efficacy, we're utilizing this as we go to disrupt the protein bar market. The North American protein bar market is worth $2.5 billion and is growing at a CAGR of roughly 7%. We will have one capsule of vinea in each bar plus 15 grams of plant-based protein. The bar itself will be a 70 gram bar, it will be 240 calories. It will be positioned as a dietary supplement because we're able to position it as a dietary supplement. And we will start off with two flavors, chocolate and, and peanut butter. The claims will be focusing on increasing blood flow and improving protein delivery to the body's tissue, cells, and muscles. What's critical when you're an athlete, you're eating a protein bar, you need to have that fast acceleration of the protein to your actual muscle cells. And with more blood flow, we're able to deliver on that. In addition, we're able to remove the waste products and toxins from the muscles and cells to support recovery. And then in addition, because it's vinea, it's increasing the physical energy performance. I have here, ladies and gentlemen, the two bars. This here is the chocolate bar, okay? And here I have the peanut butter bar, okay? Justin, tell me, are you seeing this okay? So what I'm gonna do- uh, 100%. Do, I'm actually pretty hungry, I haven't eaten dinner. You know, we'll open up in the Q&A when you're full screen. We'll go back and look at it too. Yeah, I, wanna, I want everybody to see this beautiful, sensuous um, middle that we have with the protein. It's very delicate. It tastes, really, it tastes amazing. It was super exciting. It was a very, very tough R&D challenge. Um, and our partners um, at Food Farmer did an amazing job. And you can see here the, the protein inside. You see the rich chocolate layers. Okay, so this is this is the chocolate, and I'm going to show you now the peanut butter. Okay, you can see the peanut butter looks a little bit different, a little bit lighter. It doesn't have that that same darkness as a result of the chocolate. Chocolate, and this is the peanut butter. And just to give you some perspective on what the bar looks like, I know I cut it, but you know, it's we're talking about a 70 gram bar, so it's a serious bar, right? Okay, how's that, Justin? That looks good. Does that do? Did I do the job? I, I should do. A, <laughs> I should, uh, definitely not a hand model. We're going with the coffee. Okay, I'm going. Hmm. So good. Sorry, let me just get this down. Not at all. Yeah, the one thing I comment is I, I was able to join Alon in a, a taste testing with the coffee, um, and. It was like being in a, an exam because I knew he wanted me to pick the right one as my favorite. Um, but the interesting thing is the vinea is uh, it, it 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 doesn't affect the, the taste. It's not obviously vinea, which I was surprised. So that's a really good point because vinea, from an overall sensory perspective, what we call in the industry the organoleptic performance is amazing. So it does not affect the other 
flavors and the other components of the, whether it's the beverage or the bar. So that's why it's, it's a very versatile material that we can use. All right, let me put these bars away. Um, okay, now I wanna to talk to you about how we're using superior science, superior taste and superior efficacy to go after the electrolyte beverages segment. This is a big segment. The, we're focusing here on the powdered beverage segment, which is where we can play best given the, the nature of our, of our, of our product. Um, and basically what we see here is two major players. We have um, LMNT as well as Liquid IV. You look at the size of Liquid IV, they're a monster. They have 100,000 reviews on, uh, for one of their SKUs on Amazon. Uh, same thing for LMNT. Thousands and thousands, 20, 30,000 when you add all their flavors together. Um, and they, they really are, um, are major players from what we estimate anywhere from like, you know, $67 million a month each just on, on Amazon. On the one side of the sensory continuum, you have super salty LMNT, which is very salty because it has a thousand milligrams of sodium. Literally, it's, it's like you've tasted the, you're drinking water from the, de from the Dead Sea. On the other side, you have liquid IV that's super sweet because they add significant amount of sugar, 11 grams of added sugar. We, with our unique hydration system, our blood flow energy hydration system, that's going to have 400 milligrams of vinea plus 600 milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, and 85 milligrams of magnesium fits perfectly with a very balanced taste. And again, go back to my model, superior efficacy, superior, superior science, superior taste, and superior efficacy. And we're looking at landing this at the 10 to 15 calorie mark per stick. We also, as like with everything, we got a quantitative taste test to make sure we're beating our competition. But we believe from the work that we've done, done so far that we have really, really strong uh, formulations. So North American market's worth like roughly $15 billion. This is the total hydration electrolytes market. The powder piece is at least a couple of billion dollars, at least, at least. Um, you have, like I said, 400 milligrams of vinea. Our electrolytes are all organic. Our, for example, our potassium is coming from coconut water. It's powdered coconut water. So we're using the best, the best of electrolyte systems. In addition, we're using a very unique magnesium that when the magnesium is actually connects to the water, mixes with the water, it produces five milligrams of hydrogen upon mixing with the water. And there's been a lot of research done on how hydrogen is really acts as a important mechanism for recovery for athletes. So we've been able to figure out how to get the magnesium to work in this product and to actually, you actually see, and I'll do this the next time we meet with the final formulations, I'll do the demonstration to actually show you this effect, which is very cool, where you actually see the hydrogen buildup in the bottle as you mix it, and therefore, when the actual athlete consumes it, they're getting the benefits of not just vinea, not just the organic electrolytes, but also roughly five milligrams of hydrogen. So it's a very, very differentiated proposition that we're bringing into the market here. Um, and we are, you know, when you look at it in the context of the current players, we really feel we have significant disruption to go after these big monsters. These guys are huge, huge players. Um, and we have superior science with our vinea. We have the added benefits of the hydrogen. We have organic premium electrolytes that we're utilizing. And as a product sensory experience, it tastes really good. And we're looking at flavor pool, watermelon, Mango. I've got I've got here a whole bunch of samples that have just come through. <laughs> my my sample pool here. 
I've got fruit punch, we've got orange, we've got lemon lime, we've got raspberry, we've got acai, we've got a pink lemonade, a mango, um, and um, a berry and a grape. And we also have our raw vinea flavor. In fact, our raw vinea flavor is excellent. Uh, it mixes very well, and that's another option that we bring. Now, we're not going to be launching 15 flavors. We will choose the best, probably four flavors, and bring four flavors in sticks to the marketplace. Super exciting, disruption, superior science, superior taste, and superior efficacy that is going to deliver something really, really unique to actual athletes or wannabe athletes and you can literally see and feel the overall impact of that product and what you're consuming um ultimately being a major disruptor of the category so um you know these category disruptors what's exciting is you know we using vinya as the core, so there's really minimal R&D investment. Our R&D investment is more just around things like stability, making sure we're not losing resveratrol, um, and then partnering with these amazing partners that we have in each of these um, categories. But what it allows us to do is to broaden our addressable markets to include broader um, ages and lifestyles. We're able to, for sure, accelerate top line growth, it obviously is leveraging our existing capital base from a manufacturing capacity perspective. What's important is we're premiumizing. So the dollars per unit are going higher. Somebody told me when I was a kid working in a delicatessen when I was 14 years old in order to earn money <clears throat> back in the days when I, when I just immigrated to Australia, my boss there, his name was Brett. He said to me, Elan, he was an Aussie. He said, Elan, you don't bank percentages, you bank dollars. So importantly, we're able to increase the dollars we're earning per unit here. So it's helping us from a premiumization perspective. Um, we're also going to be increasing our marketing efficiency, lots of opportunities to cross-sell, and ultimately all translating into improved bottom line performance and cash flow performance. So that kind of finishes the product scaling chapter. Wow, I've gone long. It's like an hour. Okay. Um, Justin, I have another 10 minutes. Is that okay? I'm Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, yeah, of All course. Right, All right, good. So now I want to talk to you about, obviously, what we're continuing to do on the marketing optimization uh, side, um, which is obviously a huge focus for us as we look to reduce our cost of acquisition of customers. We did see our cost of acquisition come down 13% in the, the first quarter versus 2022. And we're focused on continuing to drive that cost of acquisition down as low as it can go. Obviously for us to do that, we're now working on a surgical focus on mainstream TV. We're targeting a number of other channels and, and, and shows. And through big data, we're able to optimize where to place our two minute or 90 second uh, commercials. Um, and really making sure that we're optimizing every single dollar with these commercials, with the testimonials. To continue with the content work we know, because we know that content really is a game changer. People are just looking for so content um, and are, are hungry for content. Um, I was um, interviewed in the Rosenberg Report, which is a major TBN show. This, uh, this will be aired in, um, we're just finalizing the dates as we speak. It's going to be in the next probably two to three weeks. And that'll be obviously parked into, uh, for sure, a few hundred thousand households. And we know when we do these programs, we get significant conversions of customers um, into uh, purchasing the product. In addition, Brian and I were in Miami last week, I think it was. Yeah, it was last week. We, uh, we, had, we spent a fantastic day with Gary Breaker, who I mentioned before, who uh, is really a, a, an amazing thought leader in the area of uh, longevity. And um, Gary has his own um, podcast, um, and, and we will be featuring one podcast with Brian, one podcast with myself, and he has extensive reach. He has really developed a huge following. And again, this is definitely going to help bring an understanding of the power of BioHarvest, the power of our technology, the power of our leadership in botanical synthesis, and how we're leading this movement of change and obviously culminating in the power of what Vinia is able to do 
as it relates to its different functional benefits. Moving now to cost management, I thought it would be great uh, to share with you just an update on our manufacturing scaling. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, shareholder partners, I wish to introduce to you our new premium premier drying machine here in Germany. Uh, the machine is finished. Last week, the team went over and we did our final acceptance test um, where we had excellent functioning of the overall product. We, um, we, we, we right now, and you can see it, it's a machine for sure, um, just given what it can do. Um, just to give you a sense of the size, we have Yoav, one of our engineers, and you can see how big the machine is. That, there is the opening cavity. It looks like a big safe where the cells go in in order to be um, dried. This machine right now is uh, literally being taken apart, put into a container, and is being shipped to Israel where it will be basically installed in our facilities. And the focus now is for this machine to be producing material starting beginning of fourth quarter. So we're coming to the end now. I hope you've enjoyed um, the, the, um, the strategy, the, the plans to operationalize everything that we're doing to disrupt these categories in the nutraceutical space, how we're able to edge our weight and push our shoulders and our elbows outside of just the pure dietary supplement nutraceutical area into other categories and really drive disruption with superior science, superior taste and superior efficacy, broaden out our target audience, okay, so we can really scale the power of our technology, really unleash the power in this gold mine that we have um, and ultimately driving the revenue line, getting us quickly to the break even and the benefits of uh, profitability um, and ultimately positioning us in the best possible way. Now, this is just one phytomedicinal composition in the context of vinia that can, you know, just the gravity, we hit one home run in what I've shared with you now. This takes us to, to really opportunities of getting to that aspiration of a multi-billion multi -billion dollar biotech company. You take a brand like Celsius, it's a beverage brand where literally three years ago, you blinked, you couldn't see it. They came out into the market, got strong consumer engagement and consumer preference, had an interesting you know, initial proposition, and today is valued at $11 billion on the you know, New York Stock Exchange. So. You know, we have a good strategy. It's now focused on executing our strategy. What you've seen today is what we can do on Vinya. There's more. There's more coming, but I'll save that for later. We've shared, I think, enough today. Um, but just think, you take this and you look at what we're going to do on our olive cells and the magnitude of actually doing similar, similar playbook on our olive cells and on our pomegranate cells, and then the rest of the pipeline of products that we have, leveraging the power of the plant kingdom here, which is gonna take us to that aspiration of being a billion dollar biotech company. Our shareholder partners have been patient. You know, it takes time to build these capabilities. We're getting there, we're not there yet, but we have a clear strategy. We're now focused on operationalizing the strategy, and I have enormous confidence in the strategy and my leadership team and the broader organization to be able to execute this and really start to get some significant, significant runs on the board on top of what we've already delivered as a business up until now. So um, thank you for sharing this journey with me. And I'm looking forward to moving down the operationalization of this journey with all of my shareholder partners over the next uh, six months. Thanks, Justin. Over to you. What's the name of the big conference you're speaking at next week, Elon? So I'm actually being uh, invited by uh, Jeffrey's Investment Bank, which is a, a top uh, healthcare biotech investment bank. And I've been asked to, uh, I'll be speaking on a panel. The, uh, the conference is really is uh, focusing on innovation in the nutraceutical industry. And uh, I, was, I was really quite chuffed 
um, and humbled that they've invited um, us. You know, if you look at the the peers that I'm going to be up uh, with, these are all hundred million dollar plus 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 companies, and it's good to be um, you know uh, part of their company. And I'm I'm looking forward to it very much. It's going to be on Tuesday, all day Tuesday. Yeah, excellent. And I think maybe the first question we've had some, and you did speak to it um, at the end about uh, you know our investor journey and, and shareholder value, um, like speaking about. Uh, Jeffrey's on company valuation, uh, and then how do you how do you think it? People are asking about um, whether you know analyst coverage, institutional conversations. Uh, how do you see like the path to profitability and increasing revenues uh, resulting in you know institutional involvement? Look, um, I think what we're going to start to see in the next uh, six months is. Um, active engagement by institutions in our strategy. Um, what's going to be important, Justin, is once we hit the ground and we execute in the marketplace, once we start to see traction, I think it's going to bring, I believe it's going to bring tremendous interest. We're already seeing today um, banking institutions. I got contacted by a banking institution yesterday that uh, wants to talk, a major player that wants to talk to us around our technology um, and the applications of our technology. So, you know, people are starting to, it's been, you know, we've been, you know, at this, at this journey now for three years. And, you know, it takes time. And I think what we're starting to see is that um, as the world also starts to really focus on our swim lane in the context of going back to basics, going back to nature, going back to the plant, there's really one company out there that has the capabilities at scale with unique R&D capabilities from a plant tissue culture perspective to unleash the secrets of cellular plant technology and then to be able to scale it in the way that we can scale. There's only one company and that's us that can do that. So I, you know, I, I really believe that that interest is starting to get peaked. We have to deliver more runs on the board to mm -hmm. get that peak to the next level, but it's coming. Um, and we can, I can feel that it's coming because I, I, I see it from the inquiries that come in. Um, but the next six months are critical for us. So one question, you talk about protein bars, coffee, hydration, um, how, maybe just the order that you see those going to market and, and the timing, the timing, potential timing of each. Yeah, sure. So basically we're focused from a commercialization perspective on getting coffee out before Christmas. I want to sell on Amazon and our website before Christmas the first pods of Vineyard coffee. Um, we will run that play. And then basically in the second quarter, we will launch a green tea with Vineyard because we believe there's a whole tea lineup. That's why you see me talk about five categories. Also tea is in addition to coffee. Okay. Um, the Vineyard Pro lineup, we will bring to market in the first quarter and we'll, you know, bring the three products. The idea is to bring the three products to the marketplace very, very closely together because we want to execute them together. Um, so we can go to the athletes and we can say, okay, here are your options. This is what you can have as your core supplement. And then you can, in addition to that, you've got your hydration solution, your protein solution, right? So um, that's how we're you know, basically thinking about it. Another few questions about the drying technology. Um, how about the sort of the timing? Do you think for that big uh, machine to be online? As I said, it's you know I was working on the plan today with uh, Ilana. We're expecting to get uh, finished product from that starting the first week of October. So we we talk about the break even targets. Um, do you still see a path uh, for that to happen in uh, in 2023? Yeah, absolutely. Look. <laughs> It's it's a target and it's 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 not an easy target, right? You know, CEOs that set themselves or have boards that set themselves uh, that are given easy targets. I mean, I don't think that happens anymore, right? It's it's an aggressive target. It's a target that, frankly, you know, I think about how we get there. You know, in the in the wee hours of the night when I'm still awake, um, and um, we're very very focused at getting there. What's critical now is to finishing off the second quarter and to, you know, take that momentum and to ramp it up another level. Um, 
that ramping up is going to be driven by more marketing uh, investment. And we have some interesting um, interesting announcements that will be made, you know, in the future in that area on how we're doing that in a in a in a creative way. Um, and also obviously supported by the supply chain as the de increased demand is that you know is able to you know sync with the with the supply chain. So it's it's a it's a it's an audacious target, you know. Um, but uh, we're we're focused on it, and I'm I'm not going to let go of it until we see the end of the third quarter and we see where we get to, um, because it really third quarter is what counts. You know, uh, we had a good start to the year. You know, I believe we'll see continued momentum, and then like I said, we got to just ratchet it up significantly for the third quarter. And similarly on the on the financial side, you know, we're very focused on that. The whole team is focused on that. And we're going to do what it takes to hit that that target in the first in the fourth quarter. If we hit it, amazing. If we miss it, it'll be very very disappointing. But we'll get it in the first quarter of next year. But that's you know this is this is how we're gearing ourselves. Performance based organization. Everybody everybody has that target on their heads. In my leadership team, you know whether you're Dr. Yoki, CTO, she has objectives that link in with that target, as does Dr. Brian, as do you, Justin, right? Um, yeah. And I think you can speak for that on how focused we are as a leadership team on, on, on getting there. But these are not easy targets, not a slam dunk. There's a there's a ton of work. You know, last year when we said we were going to do between five and six million, this time of the year, I, I kind of felt the same way. I'm like, whoa, we've got to have a big, big second half, right? And uh, we pulled it off. So, you know, we're going to do whatever it takes to pull it off. Uh, and hopefully we'll get there. And worst case, we'll take another quarter. But at the end of the day, you know, it'll be disappointing. I would be very disappointed, but at the end of the day, we're building fundamental capabilities, right? And it's all about building the right capabilities, executing with excellence, and uh, you know, that are ultimately going to take us to that that end point of being a serious player in the biotech industry, able to play in nutraceuticals, in pharmaceuticals, and you know, there's a few other areas that we'll be talking to our investor partners on in the next few months. So you've spoken about, uh, you know, future Vinia being uh, more accessible in Asia or Europe and can you know or Canada. Um, these new products um, will they each most likely be available in these different markets uh, at the same time that Vinia the Vinia encapsulated will be, or, or might that be different? I think it's it's a couple of things. Firstly, the sequencing will start first with Vinia because you have to build the brand, you have to build the anchor. The anchor is Vinia, the supplements, right? If you don't have that anchor, what's amazing now is like, if people don't know about Vinia, but they see our hydration product, they'll go and search Vinia, they'll go, they'll see, wow, this is a supplement, look at the science, and now they've gone into hydration, right? If you look at LMNT, where did they come from? They didn't come from science. If you look at Liquid IV, where did they come from? They didn't come from science. Right. So, you know, where where you start is critical. So we have to build that franchise and build that credibility as we go into other markets, Canada and as well as obviously the Asian markets that we, we've spoken about. Um, so that phasing is very, very important to kind of build the anchoring, the credibility of the, the efficacy and of the science. And then over time, you can start to branch out into other categories. And you know, please God, we'll have the success in 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 some of these launches, and then we can you know pick and choose what we want to put into different markets. The Japan market is a major hydrogen market, so I think like it's a major electrolyte hydrogen market. I know that based on my my Coke days, um, and uh, so that product could be very interesting. But I would I would want to launch my supplement first, and at least give it you know 12, 18 months. And then bring in that extension. So the sequencing is very, very important strategically. Brian, just one question. A couple of weeks ago, you, you presented the clinical trial approach and a, and a roadmap. Um, so there are a few questions about uh, any updates and and whether um, the trials that you talked about um, what might actually be underway as opposed to being in planning state right now. Sure, and I can talk about two of the trials in particular. The first one that I alluded to last time was the MS optic neuritis study that we're going to be doing. I can share that since that presentation, we've secured the lab for the biomarker analyses. We're actually right now almost finalized the IP contracting, and that's going to be completed, we hope, by, say, first week or two of early July. And then after that, 
It takes a couple of weeks. We just have to finalize our protocol. We'll get that off to an institutional review board, also known as IRB. They'll review it. And then once we get the green light and stamped approval, well, I'll go and do some site visits and, you know, we'll train the research team and we'll hopefully start uh, recruiting pretty soon. So my gosh, I hope by the next time we have this presentation, I might be able to come back and share with you all that maybe we have our first patient or participant underway. But, um, you know, let's keep our fingers crossed and hope that everything goes according to plans. The second one that I shared about was the glioblastoma study. That was a, a multinational, pretty interesting and, and just far reaching study. Um, just last week, we finally got approval. There's a, a board called the Animal Research Use Committee. So they gave us the green light. So our colleagues in University of Alberta just last week started using Vinia for the first time in some of the, the animal rodent models. So again, um, maybe hopefully if, if I can come back for a few minutes during uh, Elon's next presentation, I might be able to update you all as well on some of the initial research and, and assays that we're getting back. Yeah, yeah thank you. The um, Elon, I, I don't know the answer to this. I was I was shocked at the size of the, uh, like the North American and, and global coffee pod market um I, I i know i use an espresso i know that they're recyclable they're not those aren't biodegradable um maybe just status overall on that, oh, that yeah, industry. They're recyclable. all the pods now are recyclable that are coming from the co-manufacturers yeah yeah and that's different than biodegradable but right now it's recy recyclable there are, there are biodegradable pods out there um they they haven't um they still like test and learn on that we we looked at that we investigated that uh, but everything else is recyclable. And in yeah. fact, the biodegradable pods, if the municipality that you're living in doesn't have the right kind of requirements um, in their recycling, um, you know, then there's, there, there, are there are challenges even with those pods as well. So, um, but yes, recycling now is like a cost of entry. Um, Brian, maybe one more quick one from you. I get this on the phone often. Um, people asking about uh, optimal daily dosage for vinia. Uh, people asking whether it's fine to take two every day or just two on occasion. Uh, some people saying that that one capsule every day seems to be an overwhelming amount of energy for them. Uh, can you maybe comment on um, the safety of different doses and maybe why? Um, why does vinia impact people differently? Sure, and it's a great question. And we feel that all the time as well, family, friends, customers, so let me back up, and if you all remember when I presented last time, my background is in oncology and genetics. And how I always answer this question is there's no one-size-fits-all product out there, and no two people are ever truly going to respond exactly the same way, and that's based on our genetics. You know, we get a strand of DNA from our parents, each parent, our mom and our dads, and sometimes if we have, we don't call them mutations nowadays, we call them polymorphisms or small changes, they can have a big impact. And let's just take a look at Pisces resveratrol, the main active. Some mutations or, or SNPs can actually affect the way we metabolize. We might metabolize that quicker or slower. That impacts the way we have, and, and we can actually assess efficacy of our product. So long-winded answer, to answer really quickly here, our average customer does just fine on one a day. We know for our athletes that we do recommend two per day. You know, they're doing a little bit more. They're more rigorous in their activities, and they need that incredible blood flow that Elon so eloquently talked about a, a few minutes ago. So we do recommend two per day. Just like you shared, uh, Justin, we've had some people, um, two of them, as a matter of fact, down in Texas, that just recently shared with us that they do take one half a capsule per day. They save the other half for the next day, and um, they get incredible sleep and can function throughout the day. And so, yeah, we have a big range. The final thing is there's an oncologist on the West Coast who's recommending this for some of his clients, and he takes 12 per day. He's been doing this for many months. What? Recently, he's able to sleep very well. So again, to answer your question, <laughs> there's no one size fits all, but for the average person out there, I think one a day is going to be just fine. But, you know, this we're going to be this. Is this. Our, this is importantly just to add, all our clinical trials are anchored in one a day, right? Correct. So, you know, like Brian said, there are always some edge cases, right? But, you know, um, one a day is what we recommend in the morning. And then obviously, you know, some people take half if they can't, you know, one's too much for them. Uh, it gives them too much energy just based on their overall genetic uh, composition. And then the athletes, we push to two. Can sure. you comment on uh, on corporate financing update? Yeah. Um, so we've, we've actually, uh, I'm, I must say, I'm, I'm very, very happy. Uh, we've had a very successful run the last six weeks from a corporate financing perspective. 
um, and being able to bring uh, a lot back into the treasury, which is very important for the next uh, six months um, on this road to, you know, as we're trying to drive profitability by the end of the year. Um, we'll be making some announcements uh, shortly on that. Um, I think what's been very clear to me is just um, investor sentiment and belief in the technology, in the strategy uh, that we're deploying um, very cautiously, how we utilize capital um, and really maximizing the return on all the capital that we're deploying. Um, this is really important in, in the market environment like we have right now. And then just, you know, a, a real strong appreciation on the, the magnitude of the opportunity that we have. And I think today's hopefully for our shareholder partners, you, you, you have the same sense of understanding of the magnitude of opportunity, how you can take literally one core product and, you know, through leveraging different delivery mechanisms, go in and disrupt multiple different categories. Because at the end of the day, all of these categories, people are looking for health and wellness. People are looking for overall functionality, right? Um, and they're looking for science and they're looking for credibility. Um, and uh, we can bring that to the table. So I think when investors start to see that and then they understand that we have a platform technology and there's about 500,000 other plants out there and they also have visibility of what we're bringing to the market with our unique olive cell product, pomegranate cells, you know, we've been, I've been really, really happy and a sense of strong sense of reward and recognition. Um, and that reward and recognition has come from, you know, serious investment. We're talking millions of dollars that have come into the treasury that will be uh, making a lot, uh, making an announcement and giving that visibility on very, very shortly. Next one, a few people, some questions about um, the pause in cannabis. And just status update, and if it's uh, uh, if there's any 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 change in that since uh, last quarter. Yeah, no problems. Look, uh, I must say on, on reflection, and I think about it all the time. I think the decision we made in February was the best decision uh, for for two reasons. Number one, look what we've done. Look, you know, just even you know, without this pipeline that I've just shared with you today, just the ability to execute scaling up a manufacturing facility, and then you overlay now what we've been able to do as a team around um, the R&D the R development, the marketing work to go out and disrupt major billion dollar categories that are similar sizes to the cannabis category, right? Um, so on, on, that's what focus allows you to do. We also, you know, we're able to do it with deploying much less capital and capital is so, so scarce. And then thirdly, you know, if you follow what's going on in the cannabis market, it's not getting better. All right. And, you know, nobody has that line of sight. So, you know, we'll continue to execute our strategy. We'll sit on the sideline and just see what happens. We continue to do work on the on the actual um, pharmaceutical side. Uh, we're doing more R&D in that space. Um, but I really feel that like we, we made a tough decision. Uh, I definitely had a lot of sleepless nights over that. Uh, but I, I really feel very, very grounded in, in the direction because I don't think we'd be looking at profitability you know, if we would have gone down that path, profitability wouldn't be coming for a long time, just, you know, for all the reasons in the marketplace, use of capital, et cetera, et cetera. Now we have an opportunity with where we're going. Our core vineyard is doing amazingly well. You know, I think it's very important. One thing to say, Justin, is that don't get, you know, for our investor partners, yes, this new innovation is, is game changing and we will, we will disrupt one of these categories for sure. You know, I have the confidence in that. But, you know, don't lose sight of the power of our core vineyard, you know, nutraceutical product. It's an amazing product. And we haven't even, you know, started the, 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 the growth process. You know, $8 million, I'll be happy when I'm sitting on $800 million of core vineyard, right, that we're selling, you know, across the business, in addition to obviously all the other categories that we get into. We can walk and chew gum at the same time, and that's the power of being an e-commerce business. We're working with manufacturing partners that, you know, for example, we're working with Bevnology, and I actually, I failed to mention this, I got so excited. Um, on the beverage side, we've done a lot of R&D work. Actually, it's been amazing. I had a chance to really reconnect with a lot of my friends from the Coca-Cola world. And in fact, probably one of the best R&D guys at Coke, who used to manage um, Coke uh, R&D in Europe uh, back in the day, 
He's our key R and D partner from Bevnology that's helping us develop all the products on the um, on the Vinia um, hydration system. So, you know, when we look at those different products, they're manufactured separately. You know, literally, we're just producing the Vinia powder. We've signed off all the formulations. It goes to a third party, and we're manufacturing and then bringing it into the marketplace. So it's not it's not disruptive, and we can focus just on putting on producing more and more vinyl powder, making our bioreactors more and more efficient, increasing the size of the bioreactors, and do all the other things that we're trying to do to reduce uh, our cost of goods. And the the focus that the decision we made back in February that this has allowed us to do really is allowing us to build a much stronger financial base to grow the business. So, um, you know, I think all, all in feel really, really good about that decision. And then again, just, you know, in the context of what's happening in the broader marketplace. Um, great. Thank you. I, I'm going to ask you two quick questions. And for everybody that uh, there's, there's questions coming in, um, please, Justin at bioharvest.com. Um, we will, within a day or two, we'll get you specific answers. There's questions about peanuts. There's questions, lots of stuff. Um, please send those directly to me. I'll ask two more quick ones, and then you can um, have some closing comments on. Um, first one is um, talking about walking into chewing gum, I guess. D does any of this Vinia commercialization impact um, like the timelines and the approaches that you've given for all of all no. products? no. Absolutely not. We're still, we're making great progress at Olives. Um, we're working through all the key stages right now. Um, we're hoping that um, in September, we're going to be able to give actual finished product to Mr. Brian, to Dr. Brian, to start uh, the process of um, actually testing with a number of integrative uh, medicine partners you know, across a number of different key indications that we're super excited about. Uh, we're still looking at launching this um, in the second quarter of next year, um, you know, and that's that's what we're that's what we're we're focused on. Um, it's a separate team, um, you know. This is just the way we're able to kind of prioritize within the business and make sure that we've got the right resource allocation. The um, how do you see Dr. San Giovanni, uh, recent addition to the uh, for advisory board? How do you see him contributing to the business? Wow, Dr. San Giovanni is a is a powerhouse. Uh, just huge respect for uh, for what he's done in his career. Um, he's extremely um, provocative in his thought processes. Um, you know, he's really helping us think through how we. You probably heard me use the term that we're leading this movement of change with botanical synthesis. We, you know, because we're now defining. What we do as botanical synthesis vis-a-vis -vis chemical synthesis, which is what the pharma companies do, and vis-a-vis um, vis -vis other types of, uh, of synthesis. We're leading that movement of, of change as it relates to botanical synthesis. And he's really pushing us into areas that we hadn't thought of as it relates to our technology, which is very, very uh, provoking for us, which is good because as leaders, we really need to be challenged. Um, and it just brings enormous pedigree, enormous um, credibility, um, and and actually uh, amazing connections that can you know really help the company accelerate the work that we're doing. I don't know, Brian, if you want to comment as well on that. I think we got really lucky and are blessed that we have him on our board. Um, something I think that came out in the press release for those who don't know about him and just his capabilities. He was the chief scientific and medical director of two of the largest NIH botanical studies ever carried out. Um, it's ARIDS 1 and ARIDS 2. The homework assignment, if you go to any corner grocery store or drugstore, you'll see ARIDS products. And that's thanks to John Paul and another one of his colleagues. Uh, they led both of those studies. And it's just, he has incredible connections. He's a real mensch, as we like to say, both here in the US and in Israel, just a, a real person who's, who dedicates his lives to helping humanity. And that's what uh, I hope you can see, Alon, Justin, and I, and the entire BioHarvest team, we, we do this every single day. So it was a perfect match, perfect synergy to bring him on board. Yeah, and he pushes the right buttons, which is good. He's pushing us hard. It's good. I think a great question to, have to take people away with is uh, what lots going on. What excites you the most? I think the the first thing that... I would say, like in Hebrew, we say that lick to light that lights my that lights my candle, that lights my heart, 
really is what we're doing every single day to help people. And um, like, you know, one card can't understand the magnitude of that unless you're literally getting the reviews every day and you're getting the feedback from people. And, you know, a lot of the stuff you see in the reviews, um, a, lot of, a lot of the reviews we get, I should say, we can't publish. And we can't publish those reviews because they're in the context of how our product like Vinia has been utilized in other treatments that are you know, basically not in the space of where dietary supplements traditionally can play. Uh, they related to, you know, addressing much more fundamental, you know, health issues. Um, and, um, and, and there's a lot of amazing progress in that area. Um, so when you look at what we're doing every single day to now tens of thousands of people impacting their lives, um, improving their quality of life, um, this is something that, you know, it keeps my energy going because this is not an easy job. <laughs> it's a it's it's a it's a it's a heavy responsibility that I that I have and I take very very seriously together with my leadership team, um, and we're working real hard um, in order to deliver on our objectives. Um, what I'm what I'm most excited about looking forward is really what I've shared with you today. You know, we have an amazing innovation uh, pipeline, um, the categories that we can go in and disrupt. And at the same time, I know that we haven't even started on core vineyard. So, you know, the, the future is, is really something that, you know, we're starting to see the ability to touch a little bit where we can be as a company, starting to understand that the power of scaling. I start to see in the manufacturing facility, when I look at the numbers, as we start to produce more, the costs come down and, you know, all of these things, it builds positive inertia uh, inside you. But like ultimately at the end of the day, what excites me is, and a, and a big picture perspective, is that, you know, we are doing good every single day. We've got this amazing technology that's bringing the power of plant to people. And, you know, the world today is in a very challenging place in many respects. Big Pharma has hit the wall across a number of different indications. And, and there are many players in the Big Pharma world who are have great vision, have a lot of courage, and are starting to also realize the need to go back to the plant. And so what excites me ultimately, and it's all like building blocks, what excites me is that our company one day is going to be at the forefront of developing the next generation of therapeutic solutions to address major, major indications, starting with the plant. And what we're doing now is just building the capabilities. You know, we're learning how to scale the technology. We're getting better and better on our tissue culture. Um, and um, we're getting smarter and smarter to understand how to work through the regulatory frameworks. And ultimately this is gonna prepare us, you know, I believe for something of, of a really grand proportion to be able to contribute to the world. And we're doing it all in a responsible way. You know, you, know, you saw what I said earlier about, you know, the amount of capsules and, and just the, 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 the fractionality of the land, of the electricity, of the water. So we're doing it as responsible parents and, you know, uh, leaving the world in a better place for generations to come. So uh, I feel very privileged, Justin, to be where I am. Um, um, I'm very appreciative of the patience of our shareholder partners that we, we have, um, all of you in, in this journey. And I, and I really think we're, we're making solid progress. We have a long way to go, but we're making solid progress. We have an amazing leadership team. It's taken three years to build this team. And I think you, Brian and Justin, you see this as we meet every single week, the quality of the people, the quality of the, the technical skills that we have and how we solve, you know, a lot, a lot of challenges across the business. Um, and uh, those key capability building blocks are being put in, putting in place. And that's ultimately given all of our hearts in the right place. And our, you know, we're focused on really hopefully, you know, del delivering something significant as it relates to the therapeutic solutions 
as we look at taking Vineyard to the next level and all the other products in the pipeline. So that's 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 pretty exciting as far as I'm concerned. I'm really happy to be part of this. Yeah, thank you, Alon. We just uh, the last comment we got was from Bill. He said, "I'm a I'm an investor and customer. Thanks for the inspiring update." So Bill said it really well. Uh, great thank job. You. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us, Brian and Elon. And again, for anybody, any investors uh, or media that are in Toronto next week, uh, we will have team members there, including Dr. Brian Kornblatt, uh, media and investors that are in London, England. Uh, Elon will be there uh, for a portion of next week. Now, if there are any UK investors um, and even, you know, our friends in Germany, yeah, you know, if you if you decide to make the trip, um you know basically to the uk i'll find time to spend some time with you but i, I will make myself available for investors in those parts in, in in the uk while i'm there for the probably 26 hours then i'm there so and same i'm sure with brian and justin um being in toronto fantastic yeah so thank you everybody for joining i will have this packaged and uh and shared today on, on both social and, and email